Welcome to the Jill on Money Coronavirus Market Update. It is Monday, July 20th, and uh, this is the program that takes the mystery out of your financial life amid a crazy time. So first and foremost, let me thank you all for listening and just being there for us. Now, I've got some really awesome news, at least for me and Mark. Hey, we have a sponsor this week. Remember, we used to have a sponsor way back in the beginning of the year. Then the sponsor didn't renew the contract because they're a bunch of weenies and wimps. And they're like, oh, it's a pandemic. We don't know if we want to advertise. So they pulled out. That's okay. Mark and I took it on the chin with no money coming in. We kept doing this podcast because we love you. And now you guys, your amazing Uh, amount of enthusiasm and your ability to create a little bit of a grassroots campaign, you have helped us grow the podcast. Our downloads have increased by more than 80% since before the pandemic began, and it's all because of you. Well, that means we're getting a little more attention. So I just want to give you a heads up that in the coming days and weeks and months, there's going to be some more sponsorship. So we're going to do still keep the same format, question and answer. There'll be a quick spot in the middle. Don't worry. Everything's cool. It's only going to be from advertisers that I have vetted personally. So it's not going to be any schlockeroonie. Okay. So with that said, let's get to your questions. This is from Anonymous, who's 56 and late to the game of funding retirement. I have liquid cash of $150,000, but I've lost major clients due to COVID and I may have to begin again from zero. I work for myself, own nothing, and have, as expected, too high rent costs for a single person my age. Okay, my question. In 2018, I deposited the maximum into a TD Ameritrade IRA account, but I never really understood much and I didn't designate how it should be allocated. Should I move to another provider that may be more help to work through this? How do I learn how to manage this? And more importantly, is there a financial service that can be trusted to help those with low income and lack of money knowledge to make retirement plans and work these things out? So I have to start at zero and I just don't know how to figure this out. I appreciate your show. I've learned a lot so far and I've shared your podcast with my daughters who are also learning at the same time. I also love the reminders to do something for others. It's a great message for so many of us. Stay safe, Anonymous. Okay, Anonymous, I've got good news for you. We have a lot of automatic platforms that will give the information you need and help you out. Specifically, I want to point out uh, a couple of really important ones. One is the Vanguard Digital Advisor, which can help with the actual investments of the account. But maybe you need some more hand-holding, then you could use the Vanguard Personal Service Advisor. So that's a hybrid between managing the money but having access to an advisor. You can also do that at Schwab, where they have Schwab Intelligent Portfolio, or with our friends over at Betterment. So I would try any of those three services, and I think you should be in great shape, okay? They will definitely, definitely help you out. Okay, next up, question from Pete. What's your view on syndicated real estate investment for multifamily units? I've been investing for the last 10 years, exited a few with good returns. Um, I'm okay with no liquidity. I'm retired and having critical mass. Most of them distribute all this. Uh, Your thoughts, I'm just asking in general, not for personal advice. I mean, syndicated real estate feels like something that really rich people do with like a 5% portion of their portfolio, not normal people like you and me. So, mm, I'm going to say I would probably not be that interested in it. This is from Fred. I'd like to know what the fee flows are for use of a financial advisor such as Pillar. I believe they are clients of Commonwealth Financial Services. My suspicion is that there are at least three levels of fees the particular funds management, the research people, and the salespeople. I had asked a person at this organization about fees. His only response was, fees aren't the most important thing. He never addressed numbers whatsoever. And I'm kind of a detail person. I want to understand the fees. I couldn't get information. Okay. Let me just say this, Fred. Run the other way. They have to detail their fees. It's probably in their form ADV. Feel free to follow up with me. Tell me about your situation. Let's decide whether or not you actually need this place. Okay. I mean, really fees are not the most important thing, especially when you're paying them and I'm receiving them. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right. Uh, hang tight here, gang. This is a quick message from our friends at Policy Genius. We'll be right back. You know, we talk about life insurance so much on this podcast and shopping for life insurance, it can be such a drag. It can raise a ton of questions. How much coverage do you need? Which insurance company is the best one for you? How much should it even cost? And at a time when it's more important than ever to have life insurance, it's still too complicated to shop for it. That's where Policy Genius can help. As a life insurance marketplace backed by a team of experts, Policy Genius is keeping track of all of the changes in the market so you don't have to. They'll find you the right amount of coverage at the best possible price without the headache. Policy Genius compares quotes from the top life insurance companies in one place. It doesn't just save a lot of legwork. You could save 1500 bucks or more a year by using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. So if you need life insurance, but you're not sure where to start, head to policygenius.com. Policy Genius will find you the best rate and handle the process completely. They'll get you and your family protected and hopefully give you one less thing to worry about. Try it today. Okay, let's get back into your questions. We've got a question about student loans from Jennifer. I'm on an income-based repayment, and it's great. However, even with three college degrees, what, two didn't uh, do enough for you? One didn't do enough? You need three? Oh, boy. Anyway, I'm on my second career. The first one was all short-term contracts. After 15 years of teaching, I'm currently being paid hourly. I'm at year two, so I'm not making enough to pay down my loans. I've always paid, been current. I can't pay enough to make a dent, a drop in the bucket. So my loans keep going up and up and up. And in 16 years when it's forgiven, I will have to pay taxes on that amount. It will probably take a good chunk of my retirement. How is one supposed to live like that? I talked to a lawyer. He said that when the last student loan bill was structured, Congress forgot to put in that it would be tax exempt upon forgiveness. I know it's true. There should be an answer. There isn't. Rich politicians don't care at all. The best I can do is declare bankruptcy once the IRS is after me, according to the lawyer. Here are some thoughts. First of all, don't declare bankruptcy because guess what? Federal loans don't care if you've declared bankruptcy. They won't release you from the loan. So here's the thing. Why are we worrying about this right this second? I need you to take a deep breath. There are decisions you made 15 or 20 years ago that we cannot undo. You now have this plan. You are now trying to figure out how to see if you can get income-based repayment. And I guess that you're trying to also do some sort of public loan forgiveness program. If that's the case, then if this thing gets forgiven in you know 15 or 20 years, I don't know if we have to worry about that right now. So it's a terrible situation, but we cannot possibly address these huge concerns for your broader financial life. So here's what what you may want to do. You're on this income-based repayment. Keep doing the best you can. You see if you can try to, as your hours increase, as hopefully you get more work, that you can do more. But if you are going to do the public loan forgiveness program, be sure to dot the I's and cross the T's because it is notoriously hard to make that work. Okay? I'm very sorry for what you're going through. At least just try to breathe a little bit. You, You I know you're upset. It's just impossible for us to fix the problem from where you sit right now. Okay. This is from Melissa who says, love the show and appreciate the brevity. (laughs) That sets your podcast apart from others. I'm 48. I earn a six-figure salary. I'm married and mom to a great 13-year-old. Trying to get my financial house in order. I'm contributing up to the company match 6% in a 401a. That's the most the organization lets us contribute in the plan. I also contribute 10% in a 457 plan. Last year, I maxed out my IRA and I plan to continue doing that. I also contribute two to 300 bucks a month to a 529 plan and I just open a taxable account. I'll likely work until I'm 65. That's okay. My organization is moving our retirement plan from Voya to Prudential. Oh boy, it's uh, Mark, give me the right analogy here. I guess that's like going from the Titanic to the Andrea Doria. I mean, come on. Two insurance companies. I can't stand it. It's so much that's what happens with these big school systems. They always they always go to insurance contracts. I hate that. Okay. It's the third plan in 8 years. Uh, it seems like I'm constantly reviewing new plan options. What are your thoughts on the Dryden S&P 500 index? It's identified as a 
proprietary separate account. That's just because it's an annuity contract that you own. Okay. And so it means that the assets are in a separate account. So that's fine. There's an insert that said PREAC, which I think is Prudential something, investments, da, 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 um, owns the assets in the separate account and receives dividends and, re- and receive deduction. What does that mean? I haven't been able to find a lot of details on the fund. I, most, I note that most of our options have expense ratios of 0.44% or higher unless you choose a target date fund at 0.35%. Oh, criminy. Okay. So this is part of, so this is a proprietary fund of Prudential. You know, it just sucks that they have crappy funds in here. It really does. So, you know, an index fund should be basically free, a tenth of a percent, but because it's in a damn annuity, there's not much you can do about it. So I don't know how much money you have total that's in the plan, in the 457 plan, but maybe um, what I would do is, is there any other plan? Is there any other provider? Do you have to use this Prudential thing? If you do, you do. And if, you, there's, not, if there's less than $50,000 in the plan, then maybe you just do the target date fund because the fee is really, oh, what a pain in the neck. The fee is a killer. Hey, school systems, can we stop it with these lousy plans? Oh my God, it's school systems and any municipalities. Okay, here is a note from Jackie, who is grateful for our daily podcast. She says, I really enjoy them. I learn something new every day. I was a caller on the program over a year ago, March 26th, 2019. Per your advice, I started a laddered CD approach for $75,000 of my funds. I also continue to funnel all of my 401k dollars directly into the Roth option. Due to some health concerns, I didn't do anything with the remaining $100,000 in extra funds until last month. I placed it all into a brokerage account with Vanguard Personal Advisor Services. In a recent episode, you mentioned you don't necessarily recommend that folks jump on the stock market bandwagon at this time if they've never invested before. This may be pause and think, should I have held $100,000 for a bit longer until the world stabilizes a bit? I played the clip to my husband. He says, relax. She's talking about people trying to time the market. Either way, I don't plan on pulling out my money. I'm in it for the long haul. Could you clarify what you meant by this comment? It would be most appreciated. Oh, P.S. My mother-in-law always pushed for me to learn about investing. She would constantly send me newspaper clippings that focused on investing and smart money strategies. She felt it was important to be independent and not rely on anyone else, including a spouse, to make all of the financial decisions. It was one of your articles she sent me that introduced me to your podcast. She passed away after a long battle with cancer only a few weeks before I was on your show. She would have been so proud of the steps I have taken to secure my financial future. I think of her often and every time I listen to your show. I could almost cry right now, Mark. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what a lovely sentiment. So let me get to the issue that you bring up first, and then we're going to talk about your mother-in-law and why I am so grateful for people like her. I was talking about people who were just watching the stock market and then thinking they were going to plow a bunch of money in there trying to catch the upward trajectory. These are clear market timing types. They are the folks who want to start day trading. They are the folks who want to start asking me about options. They are the people who maybe should be more balanced in their investment approach, but then say, hey, maybe I should put all of my money in the stock market. So no, I am not recommending that you delay your plans. I don't think that we are going to wait until the world stabilizes a bit. If you are a long-term investor, and you understand the risks of being that kind of investor, and you know that probably the day after you put your hundred grand to work, the market will go down, then go ahead. Just get going. If you're spooked by that thought of putting a bunch of money in at once, you can always dollar cost average in. Maybe you put $20,000 a month in till the end of the year, and that's it. But I think that if you are a long-term investor and you're realistic, feel free to go ahead and make the leap. Now, a moment about your mother-in-law. 
I think this is such wonderful advice. And I think for anyone who sort of outsources money management to a spouse, maybe to a parent or even a sibling, it is not necessarily the case that you must do everything on your own, but you do need to understand what these people are doing. And I think that that advice that your mother-in-law gave you is so sound, and I am very grateful that she sent you an article. Truly, that means the most to me today. Really fantastic. So, okay, we are going to get back to questions in just a moment. Now, this is exciting. We get to introduce a new advertiser to the program. So are you guys all cooking more than you ever did? I know I am. I am the personal chef for this household and I'm exhausted from it. I'm exhausted from figuring out what I need. I'm exhausted from figuring out what to make. I'm exhausted from shopping. And that is why I'm so psyched that Thrive Market is one of the new advertisers of the Jill on Money show. So psyched. So here's what Thrive Market does. They deliver organic and sustainable groceries right to your front door. So when you become a Thrive Market member, you get products that you love and your paid membership provides a free one for someone in need. You know how we talk about lifting someone else up? Well, that's what your membership will do. It will help a low-income family, a teacher, a veteran, a first responder. Neat thing is you become a member and you save 25 to 50% off traditional retail prices. Carbon neutral shipping is free on any order over 49 bucks. In addition to membership matching, Thrive Market has raised over three quarters of a million dollars to date through their COVID-19 relief fund. I am psyched to become a member of Thrive Market and you will be too. Just try it risk-free. Go to thrivemarket.com slash Jill on money. Join today and you'll get up to $20 in shopping credit towards your first order. That's thrivemarket.com slash Jill on money. And you'll start your risk-free membership and get up to 20 bucks towards your first order. Thrivemarket.com slash Jill on money. Okay, we are back and we are ready to take your questions. It's Jill on money. If you have anything on your mind, remotely financial, with a dollar sign attached, maybe it's a career question, send us a note. It's askjill at jillonmoney.com. Here's a question from Bob. Ready? Question. How about interviewing the mystery man sometime? We know Mark has a child, a partner, perhaps. He's a CFP. Why? Fill in some blanks, please, Bob. Mark, now the, the, the listening public wants you. That could be a whole series of podcasts, just the life of Mark Talercio. I will think about it, Bob. He says it's not very exciting, but you know what? I think we should do it, Mark. I think the people deserve this. It's COVID time. Come on, give the people what they want. Stop with your withholding. Come on. All right, that's it for the program. I want to thank you again for listening. It is always an honor. I will work on Mark. We're going to get him on the microphone and uh, maybe we'll get his son on as well because they do come as a, as a nice package deal. If you have a financial question, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Our email address is askjill at jillonmoney.com. You can find all sorts of stuff on the website at jillonmoney.com. You can listen to old shows. You can sign up for our free weekly newsletter. That website, jillonmoney.com. Again, tons of information there. I want to remind you as always to wash your hands and wear your masks and and maintain your physical distancing. And please do something nice for somebody else today. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.